So today we're gonna use BotPress and we're gonna see how to create a custom chatbot and then use AI as a knowledge base for that chatbot we've created. Now, it's not complicated. Actually, it's really fun and we'll just go step by step so you can just learn how to use it. And then of course, we're, we're gonna show some of the ways in which you can make money with this one. But I gotta tell you, I gotta be honest with you, this is not a get rich quick scheme. This will require work, but it's, you know, it's not complicated at all. Let's just start so you can see what I mean. First of all, I'm not affiliating with BotPress. You can just Google for it like this. It's gonna be botpress.com. And this is gonna be the homepage of it. And as you can see, you can just click on this button. So get started for free. Just make yourself an account, log in with any one of these. And this is how it's gonna look like inside. This is your dashboard. And right out of the bat, you can see create bot here, right? So if you click on this button here, first of all, you'll have to name it. And let's say that we want to make something related to travel today. So let's just make a travel agent, just like that. Click on create button here. So here's our travel agent here. And this is the button where you can edit this in studio. So when you click on it, it's just going to look like this and it will lead you to the studio version of it. This is the place where you can add some descriptions of it, you know, the usual stuff. But this is the workflow button. This is the place where, well, let's just call the bread and butter. Here you create notes and I'll just delete this video. This is something that we don't need. So this is the place where everything will happen. You can see that we have a starting note and an ending note. Basically every other note and every piece of logic we add to our chatbot will happen between the start and the ending note. This one, this autonomous one, you can learn later on what it is, but I'll just delete this one. Let's just start from scratch. So this is what you're gonna start with. We don't need this as well. I'll just move it out of the way like this. So let's just focus from the start, right? I told you it's gonna be simple. So let's just go step by step. So we're creating a travel agent and whenever the client wants to interact with it, it's gonna start here. And then you right click here and you add standard node. You can rename it. So let's just say beginning, right? Like this. And here add a card is what this node will do. All right, so when you click on add card here, you've got a lot of these. It's basically what the chatbot will do, whether it's gonna send a message, in that case, you're gonna choose one of these, whether it's gonna execute something, whether it's gonna go and, you know, search the web, and there's a lot of things here, right? But the most important one for us today is the flow logic, and of course, capture information. So capture information is something that will depend on the user input. All right, but for the beginning one, we'll just go with the message and I'll just use text here. I'll move it here and then you will just write the starting or beginning message and it can be something like this. Hello, let's suppose that people already wanna go for a travel and then they're just deciding where they wanna go. So first of all, I'm gonna ask, maybe let's just go with how big of a group are you traveling with? So that's gonna be the question, right? and then that person will have an answer. But we wanna add expression here. This here in the flow logic, now we wanna add expression. And we're gonna name this one group size like this. So basically what this means, if they put a group size of let's say two, it's gonna redirect them somewhere else. And of course we wanna capture information from them. So how big of a group are they traveling with? And this is the place where you can just search for these. And there's a number here. So I'll just move this here. So first we're gonna see for the number. So how big of a group are you traveling with? And this is the place where we'll create a variable, right? So this one will name group size as in that expression. Click here. And then you have the place where it'll store results in. Now we're gonna add two more expressions here because we want three different results, all right? I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna label it if a group size is less than four, let's say here, and the condition. The second one is gonna be if a group size is between four and seven. And the third one, if a group size is more than seven. Let's just do it like this. Now the conditions here are really important because you remember that we asked how big of a group are you traveling with? And we chose this to make this workflow, which is group size. Now you just have to rewrite this. So for each one of these, let's start with the first one. So you go to condition, you click here, 
first of all, you delete this, and then you start with workflow dot group size. It is really important to have the same name as you named it here, right? So it is workflow group size, it's numbered, and this is gonna be the condition. But for this one, it's gonna be less than four, right? For the second one here, we turn this off here. For the second one here, it's gonna be like, now between four and seven, so it has to be more than seven. You put it like this, it's actually like this, and then you put second one less than seven. So this is what we're gonna do here. And for the last one, you just put higher than seven. So what's gonna happen here now? Let's do a quick recap. So first of all, there's gonna be hello message. Then the person will be asked, how big of a group are you traveling with? And then they will just put in a number. And if a group size is less than four, we're gonna recommend them, let's just say Paris. If a group size is between four and seven, we're gonna recommend them London. And if a group size is more than seven, well, we're just gonna send them to Egypt, right? To the pyramids. So what do we have to do next? Well, first of all, we have to connect these nodes. Let me show you. So you connect starting now to this one. And then because we have three choices here, now we're gonna make three different nodes for each one of these answers. So let's just make Paris first. I'm gonna just move this like here. So right click once again, standard node. I'll name this one Paris. And first of all, I'm gonna add a card here, which is gonna be a text card first. So text card, and I'm gonna write, grade your group size is, so I'm just gonna do it like at, so group size, and it's just gonna give the number that they put here in the group size. So now they're now we're listening, right? That's a good thing. And then we're gonna add another card, which is a text card as well. And it's gonna go like this. So for a group that size, we recommend going to Paris. And of course, the first one, because we wanna recommend this if a group size is less than four, we're gonna connect this node to Paris, right? So now it's a bit more clean. Let me just move this here. Let's add another one and let's add one more. This one is gonna be London, we said. And the last one is gonna be Egypt, right? So pyramids, whatever. Card is going here. Remember, first of all, this one, and I'll just copy everything from the first one here. So text, you write it like this. You add the same thing for the Egypt because that's like the welcoming message for the group. And then we're just gonna take this and we're gonna add more text cards here and here. This one is gonna say for a group that size, we recommend going to London this time. And for a group of this size, we recommend going to Egypt, right? Now it is remembered to just keep everything here intact just so you can have a clear, you know, have a clear vision of what is going on with your workflow here. It's just gonna be better for you. And of course, connect all these nodes. So from four to seven, between four and seven, they're gonna go to London, all right? We wanna send them to London and this one is gonna go to Egypt, right? So you can see it's really fun, it's not hard. If you just follow these steps, you can connect all of these with ease. So what now? First of all, I'm gonna move the end way here. And let's say that our travelers, they've decided to go somewhere, right? So they've asked, for a recommendation. Now, whatever they choose, we want them to go to another node, which is gonna be like just a standard question node like this. So question node, if I only could spell it right, it's okay, like this. Now, here, you add a single choice card, and the single choice card is under capture information. This is one of the most important card selection, this capture information, so you're always gonna know that. So single choice here, I'm gonna add single choice, you click on it, you decide a question here, so what is gonna be? Let's say they've decided, so do you have any more questions? The first one is gonna be yes, then you click on the plus icon, and the second one is gonna be no. So this is how it's gonna look like, but you have to connect these, all right? All these three, whatever the answer is, you want the next step to go to this question here. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we have to add a card, which is expression once more. Here it is under flow logic expression once again. 
but this one is just gonna go with always, right? So whenever whatever happens, it'll just move on, right? So expression here, expression here, and expression here. And all you gotta do now, because it is always or true, now you just have to connect, right, to this node. So from this node to this node, and the last one as well, always, so whatever the answer, they're all gonna go to this question, right? So looks good now, right? There was a welcoming message, then the group size questions, and then we go whether the person or the user has more questions. If they don't have any more questions, we're just gonna go with no, and we're gonna connect this to end, right? So the chat is gonna be over, so this is the end. But if they do have a question, well, we gotta make another note, right? Now, this is where it becomes really complicated. I mean, it's not complicated, it's more fun because you now connect AI, knowledge base or something, whatever your client gives you or you have in mind. And whatever the person, the user asks as a question, it's gonna search through the knowledge base and it's gonna give the correct answer. But we just have to connect that. So we're gonna right click standard noun and let us just name this AI knowledge base like this. These are just for you to know, right? So where you are headed. Now add a card, we wanna capture information. This time we will need raw input, right? So this one, raw input. So here, person can ask whatever, right? So what are we gonna ask? Let's go with, what would you like to know? Just like that, so what would you like to know? And the raw input means that the person can ask whatever they want. And now we have to add that knowledge base and this is the button for this, so knowledge bases. And here, of course, you've got a few options. You can put like a website of your own, of your clients. You can put PDF files, docs, you know, tables, or you can just go with the web search. You know, there's a lot of these things and these will depend on what your client is gonna give you. So when you get yourself a client, usually on Fiverr or wherever you intend to find the job, I'm gonna talk about that later on. But that customer is gonna give you certain knowledge source, right? So whether it's gonna be their own website or some kind of a document or whatever. Let's suppose this is your client. This is a travel blog. It's called the World Travel Guy, right? And now this customer wants all of that info inside of his chatbot for travel agency. He wants everything that the people ask to be taken from the website, right? So this is what you wanna do. You just copy the link of it. You go back here and then you just click on the website here and you just paste that. So there's the World Travel Guy here. It'll browse the website. It has all these pages. You see, it's just too fast. It just takes all the pages at once. And then you just click on add pages. And there's like 359 URLs, which will it search from, right? And of course, you just have to connect the single choice here. If they have any more questions, you have to go to here, of course, and then just add one more expression here because you now you just wanna go in loop and just a simple expression one. So always, when it's done with the question, when they get the answer, always just go back to this question again, right? So this question here again, let me just show you so it's gonna be more visually better for you. So whatever they do, let's just close this. So whatever they do, they just have a question, they go to ask the question, and when they get the answer, it's just gonna go back, do you have anything more to ask? And if it's a no, it's gonna end. So that's it. What do we wanna do now? Well, we just wanna test this bot. You can just click here on test your bot. And let me just increase the size of this. So these are for you only. This says error, this is for you. So now the user is gonna answer how big of a group they're traveling with. And let's say they travel with eight people like this. As you can see, exactly what we wanted. Great, your group size is eight. For a group that size, we recommend going to Egypt. So do you have any more questions? So if they don't have, they'll just click no. If they have yes, it goes to the main AI knowledge base. What would you like to know? And now the person can ask whatever they wanna know. I'll just say, so what is there to do in Egypt? And of course, now it's gonna search for that info on the website we provided or a PDF file or whatever. And here you can see that it extracted, so visiting the pyramids, discovering historical sites, whatever, and this is for us only, it shows you where it found that information on the website we provided.
Now these are really in demand and they're really expensive. As you can see, they range from 125 for the simple ones, then it's 640, 750. You know, there's a lot of demand for these things. The reason for that is that even your bakery or flower shop, they need chatbots today. So that's my recommendation. Start locally. Ask people around whether they need chatbots. You can use Fiverr as well, but it's best to start locally and then just build your way up. Of course, you will get more practice with it. It's going to get more complicated. People will ask more things from you, but you can start with these simple things. And with time and experience, you will grow. So that was about it. Wish you good luck and I'll catch you in the next one.